Okay, we're going to work on some linear shading techniques. If you remember back when we did our scientific illustration, we were looking at different ways that you can create value and texture using um, line and dots. And so we did the stipple method, if you remember. Um, what we didn't do was hatching, which is going a single direction, or cross hatching, which is where you go multiple directions to change value. So you have a lot of examples in that packet that you were given originally, as well as different ways to create texture using some pen techniques. So this might be really helpful to you when you're working on your fantasy creature, thinking about how I can apply these simple methods of hatching and cross hatching and stipple that you already did um, to create your different values. So the media of our choice is going to be a ballpoint pen. And you can use a number of different brands for this. You can do your artwork in black or you could do it in blue. Um, we probably won't for this first one try different colors like red or green or so on. Um, but you could later experiment on your own to try some different pens. Also, some people like certain brands so you can experiment with different pens that you have as well. So we're gonna start first with just the hatching. Now I want you to practice the basic technique of hatching on the value scale, and then I'm gonna have your geometric solids. So you have those on the front, but you also have some on the back. Now the lovely thing about ballpoint pen is that you can make a line that is really dark, but you can also make a line that is very light. So through pressure and layering, just like with graphite, you can create different values. I like to um, start dark and work light, but you can go whichever direction you want. On the example here, I started with the light and then gradually worked dark. I'm going to flip it here. What I want you to do is to use short, close, overlapping marks, and just like with the graphite, if I use a more vertical technique, the value is going to be really dark. And then as I want it to get lighter, I'm going to go over it less times. And with hatching, you're just going to go a single direction. And I want you to go and transition from light to dark. I can change the angle. I hold the pen back a little bit farther, and I can actually get it to go even lighter. All right, so you can see that the pen is really, really light based on my pressure and the angle in which I'm using the pen. Now sometimes the pen will skip, so you have to be extra careful um, that you don't get like balls or beads of ballpoint pen. A lot of times people keep scrap off to the side. Your Bristol board is pretty soft, so you'll probably not have issues, but with this handout, I like to put it on the back of my sketchbook so that I'm able to have a nice soft surface to work from. And so I'm gonna kind of ease on the pressure and go all the way across, letting it get lighter and lighter and lighter. And so I'm able to go all the way to white by using fewer and fewer lines and going over it less and less. Now there's a big gap here where it's like similar values. So I'm gonna probably pull the black over even farther. To get more transition. Now, when you're working with hatching, you gotta be real careful of your edges. Sometimes people will like to use a ruler or another object or a sheet of paper to kind of keep their edges nice and clean. Most of the time your hatching probably won't be quite this long since you're working in a small miniature drawing. So you can experiment with this. If you want to try it first, maybe in your sketchbook, that will be pretty good. So when you're working on the geometric solids, you've got your handout where you can use your light source. On your fantasy creature, I would probably use whatever object is like the most detailed or the most difficult to draw. 